Hi, how you guys? <laughs> hey, I'm so happy to see you both as well. Hi. I'm so excited to be celebrating and talking about this show. I can't stop watching it. Jessica Biel, you've been nominated for an Emmy before for The Sinner. I believe <laughs> with all of my heart that this will be your next Emmy nomination. Oh my um, goodness, geez. <laughs> I, I really do, you're so incredible in this show. And Melanie, I also believe you will be nominated for an Emmy for this show. Oh. And then I, I also just had the esteemed pleasure, as we all did, watching you win your award um, at the Critics' mm -hmm. Choice. And then you get up yeah. there and you kind of do this thing that goes viral and wild afterwards because you thanked your nanny. Yeah, I mean, She's, I was kind of surprised that it became like a thing afterwards because when I think about the people who are the biggest part of my life who make it possible for me to work, it's my husband and my nanny. She's just the coolest person in the world and she works so hard. And how lucky am I that I have a person like that taking care of my child so I can really go to work and concentrate and not be worried. I mean, what, what a mm. fortunate thing. Melanie, I really think you might have opened a new door for all of us women to acknowledge people in our inner circle in a different way. And I thank you for that. It's oh, a big thanks deal. Thanks so much for saying that. Thanks. I fully agree. I mean, I think what a, what a beautiful thing to do. And there's no way my life either would exist without the two wonderful nannies that that take care of my beautiful kids. So thank you, Melanie. And thank you to everyone out there who's making everyone else's life, you know, possible outside of the house. We could not do it without the support teams that we have impossible. And we shouldn't be ashamed to, you know, to, to tell the truth about that. I don't think. Well, it's funny, you know, we do live in a different, more modern society and the show that you're doing, um, you know, is a bit aesthetically of a period piece. Um, it's a true story. You guys, this is one of the most eerie, suspenseful. It gives my flesh tingles and makes it crawl in all the right ways. It's so good. <laughs> How did you make a show this good? It's intimate, but it just, ah, ah. How, what was your approach to this show, Jessica? There, there was a real sense of, uh, importance in creating the the like mundanity of a suburban life, especially back in 1980 in a place like Wiley, Texas. And to sit in those very um, normal, somewhat eerie, strange, isolating, you know, experiences and to really see specifically these two women in their separate but similar um you know, their mindsets, which are very different, but also I really believe going through very similar issues um, with feeling alone and feeling maybe a lot of regret and a lot of resentment about how their life has turned out. And I think so many of us can, can really, we can really empathize and understand that feeling. And there are choices made like Melanie, when you're sitting in your house you're alone and the baby keeps crying. And it's like, there's no trickery. It's the onset of a baby crying repeatedly throughout the day and the night in different intervals. And I'm like, this has so many layers to it. How did you, I mean, how did you do it? Well, I mean, I felt her very deeply in my soul. I mean, she was somebody who was a, a complicated person, not the easiest person. And a few people that I talked to believed that she had kind of undiagnosed postpartum depression because it wasn't really discussed in 1980. And she was really struggling. And it just moved me so much that she had no one to turn to. And it's part of the heartbreak of the story is because she felt at a certain point, like she could turn to Candy as a friend, like she had one friend finally. And then oh yeah, happened. yeah, she could.